Hey there guys, I hope you're okay. I am your host, Jess LaRusso, and welcome back to another video. Those of you who are new, hi, I just told you who I was. In this video, we're going to be reacting to some more Nukes Top 10. This one is called Top 10 Crazy Scary Ghost Videos. Ooh. Now, I will state one thing that all of the people that are actually listed in the video are actually listed in the description, because I always do that now. Each time, no matter what video I react to or debunk their names will be in the description like I do with it, all my other videos so uh, if you want to go and check them out please do so when you do tell them that Jesse LaRusso sent you so in all further ado let's get to it okay paranormal enthusiast James White has a very spooky business he professionally arranges and hosts seances in allegedly haunted and abandoned buildings in Toronto, Canada. Okay. James is hosting a seance at the historic Lambton House with a group of curious participants. The Lambton House is a former inn that was built in 1860, and it is said to be extremely haunted. I just... I want to know something. If, if Nick's Top 5 is called Nick's Top 5, then why does he have the top 10 crazy scary videos if it's Nuke's top 5? Just got me wondering and I'm thinking his channel is called Nuke's top 5. So why is it top 10? I don't know, it's probably just me. I'm overthinking things. Now James White and his group are about to witness something absolutely terrifying. Okay. <laughs> Is it a person? So give me a sign. Are they in this room? Okay. Is it um? Is it a male? Oh, oh shit. Oh, they pulled him back. He fell his chair to the back. Why did he chair to the back? Oh, uh, it's not moving. Oh, something just pulled. Yeah. Keep your hands together. Keep your hands together. Did you grab him as soon as he fell back? Oh, so they're in a circle. Okay. While in the middle of a seance, you could clearly tell he was getting a bit agitated when they go. So he brought his chair. Yes, <laughs> you can clearly tell he was getting agitated, asking that question so many times. Participant is forcefully yanked backwards out of his chair by an unseen force. Is it, um, it seems is that way. Hell? Oh. The door behind me was open. Okay. And um, I had my partner sitting beside me, and we had the door, like the door was open behind us, and we thought we heard something back there, but nothing was there. So we turned, and I looked, and I saw nothing. So I turned my head back towards the group, like the circle, and we're all. Oh, it's a dog barking that I can hear outside. I wonder what that noise was. Holding hands. And then all of a sudden, I just felt like this. All right already. Hello, I'm filming. Calm down. God. This force just come and pull me back. And it was like aggressive. Like aggressive. It wasn't like calm. It was aggressive. Like it was trying to kill me or something. I don't even know. My feet were like flat on the ground and wasn't moving. I was holding hands with the people beside me and it just pulled me. And it like felt like someone was coming up behind me, like standing up behind me as I'm sitting in the chair and like taking my shoulders and like pulling me towards the mirror. It was crazy. Fellow participants and eyewitnesses from the seance took to Instagram to share Whoa. their stories about the incident. One seance witness had this to say about the strange event. I sat across from him when this happened, and it was fantastic to see. I sat across from him when this happened, and it was fantastic to see. So you thought it was fantastic to see a colleague of yours being pulled back. Okay. You thought it was fantastic to see him being pulled back like that. You could have been injured. Just saying. Another witness says, I was there. Another epic seance with at James White's seance. 
So did James White capture evidence of an unknown entity aggressively grabbing an innocent visitor at the Lambton house? I leave it up to you to decide. Is it, um, is it a male? He does look like he was being pulled back though. Scream. YouTube channel D's Dark Adventures says that an anonymous fan emailed her about a very creepy experience he had while driving home late one night. Okay. The dash cam video shows the man driving down an isolated country road in the middle of nowhere. Suddenly, he spots something that makes his blood run cold. Dash cam video cut for time. Okay. I don't see anything as yet. What the hell? Excuse me, you need help. What the f The driver suddenly spots a woman walking all by herself in the middle of the night. As he gets closer, he is horrified when he sees that the woman is covered in blood. I was going to say that. Safety, it looks like that. He rolls down his window and asks her if she needs help. Excuse me, you need help. After which, she lets out a blood-curdling scream. <laughs> what the f At this point, the man notices that the woman appears to have no eyes, only black sockets. Terrified by her reaction and appearance, what the driver quickly just gets out of there. He says that he called the police, but they never found this mysterious woman. So just what do you think is going on here? And what would you do in this same situation? What the f well, considering that she looked all dressed in like blood and everything, and the fact that the guy said that her eyes weren't there, they were just covered in black sockets. Now, she could have easily overdone her makeup by having red like black makeup on. So that, that way then it looks as if they were like sockets for the for the eyes when in reality it could be black like makeup that people use if they're into grudge and all that lot, grunge or like black metal or if you're into the black black scenery you could have like dark shadow eyes and all that lot um so that could be misinterpreted to that um nobody would walk around without their eyes in their sockets Nobody is that stupid. And I've never seen that done. And the fact that she was walking down the street, literally, covered in blood, could either mean of two things. Either A, she got away from a crime scene. The fact that she's done something really, really bad, that's why she's screaming. Or it could have been her, who was the victim, that could have been a in a vicious attack. The woman in white. You okay. top five viewer and paranormal investigator Mark Reyes emailed me about a video that he captured with his family while on a ghost hunt at the Evangelical Spiritual Church in Cicero, Illinois. Um, before I do anything else, I am thinking of doing some paranormal um, hunting in the new year. Let me know in the comments below if you think you would want to see a few of those ideas. And someone is calling me, bugger off, I'm in the middle of something. Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, let me know in the comments below if you want me to do any of the um, paranormal huntings in the new year. I'm thinking about doing it. I already have a channel dedicated specifically for that. But um, let me know in the comments below. I still do reaction videos, debunking, etc, etc. But I also want to do some paranormal huntings myself so I can get some ideas to see if they do in fact actually exist. So uh, like I said, let me know in the comments below and uh, see what happens. Okay, back to the video. The church was once used as a funeral home and is said to be extremely haunted. It's the middle of the night and Rick and his family are investigating the church when suddenly their EMF meter detects something that they can't see. Okay. What happens next is truly chilling. Are you afraid? That room over there is scary. Have you seen it? The whole place is scary, not alone that whole room. The whole place is scary. Whoa. This is a private office. So you can't go in there. No, I'm saying that it's open because we could. I wonder if they saw that. Probably not.
and yet she's no longer there. Did you see it? I did. A woman who seems to be wearing a white yep. gown can be seen standing behind the family on the far side of the church. Ricky says that his daughter felt a presence as she looked back, but that none of them actually saw the mysterious woman at the time. Um... That could easily be misconstrued as a mannequin dressed up. But I don't... Saying that, though, when she was walking around, I didn't see any other mannequins there. So, maybe not. It wasn't until they returned home that they discovered what they had captured. So could this eerie figure possibly be the spirit of one of the people who passed through the funeral home? Let me know what you think. We need scary videos. So okay. if you see something that you think would be perfect for the top five, send it to us at nukestop5 at gmail.com. The Burial Mounds. Paranormal investigator Ian from the YouTube channel Midwest Ghost Hunter is back with another investigation. This time... Sub to this guy, and his videos look amazing. So, yeah, go and, subs go and subscribe to him. And go and say that just low research in you, because he is actually quite good. Um... Yeah, that's what I need to add. I'm at the mysterious Native American burial mounds at the Crow Wing River in Minnesota. Many people claim to have experienced terrifying paranormal activity at the burial mounds. Okay. Some have heard the strange sound of phantom drums and disembodied voices. And some visitors even claim that they have seen glowing apparitions at the site. Okay. Curious about the claims, Ian decides to do an overnight investigation in the hopes of capturing paranormal evidence. Things quickly take a very creepy turn as Ian searches for one of the burial mounds. Hello. Sorry. <laughs> Man, walking through these woods, I feel like anything could just pop out at me right now. Like from anywhere. Bears, Bigfoot, ghosts, anything. Ghosts, I kind of believe. Bigfoot, not a chance. I don't know if I'm going crazy. I thought I heard something behind me. Hello? Who's over there? I don't know. Maybe I'm just paranoid. I thought, thought I heard something, but I'm not sure. It could be just you. Ooh, Ooh, oh, wait, even I heard those. Okay. Whoa. All right. I don't know, man. I, I, maybe I'm not going crazy. I don't know. I don't know if I should try this, but I'm gonna try walking backwards because I want to see what's coming up behind me. Honestly, I don't even like walking backwards. I just can't get how good the lighting looks right now. It's literally on point with these videos. So I'm loving this light. I would also mention as well that um, I've actually found some more and even better lighting um, online. I will be getting out when I get paid, uh, which is next week, which is amazing. Um, so I will be getting a better lighting. And this one actually moves. So even more impressive. So um, it's still the same lighting kind of thing, but it moves. Where this one just stays put and just changes lights. So uh, yeah, I just thought I'd give you that useless information. Do with it what you will. So yeah. Because I don't know what's ahead of me. Is there somebody out here with me? Oh my oh. god! Holy sht! That scared me so bad. I heard that, that literally was right here. Voice. It was. From thin air. It was as if somebody was standing like right there. Hello? Ian hears footsteps following him. Then he hears a loud, indiscernible voice. He's now a little freaked out, but he continues his search until he finally finds one of the Native American burial mounds. What happens next is truly disturbing. All right, here's mound number two. I'm actually not going to say anything this time. I'm actually just going to listen. They could be talking in the back. It could be more people there. Yeah. 
they what he could be hearing could be fact of people far far in the distance walking doing the exact same thing he's doing so you can't really pull that off as like ghost talkings because a lot of people are going to actually venture where he is as well so what he's picking up could be other people talking in the background oh my god i'm hearing all kinds of things over here well you are in the woods sweetie so it sounds like voices Oh well, yeah. So faint. But you can also hear some like twigs breaking that lot, which tells me that they're far back walking and that's what he's picking up. A female voice can be heard speaking almost as if someone at the burial mound is having a long involved conversation. But it's something else that really spooks Ian as he explores the Crowing River's edge. Something truly terrifying. Even though there's not much going on right now. Something truly terrifying. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to take the piss. It's a lot of fun just being out here. Out in the wilderness. Even though it's dark. Daytime, yes. Barely see 10 feet ahead of me. Good time. In the daytime, Holy it's good. <laughs> in the uh, daytime, it looks epic. Is that nighttime? It looks creepy AF. Just when I said it was fun being out here. Pretty sure there was a goose back there splashing in the water. Of all things, Ian's <laughs> biggest scare so far comes from the sudden sound of a honking goose. Holy sh. Eventually, Ian finds another burial mound. Hold up. Now, of all things, Ian's biggest scare so far comes from the sudden sound of a honking goose. Holy. Oh, okay. I've, Ian I thought it was a talking goose. It was like it wasn't talking, it was flying, but okay. Ian finds another burial mound. Now, Ian knows that he might not be able to communicate in English with the spirits of the Native Americans buried there. Okay. So, he decides to just listen. What happens next is truly bizarre. <gasps> okay, I just heard talking. That sounds like a male voice. Mm. Could you speak again? <gasps> Whoa! Oh my god! Dude! That was a face! Yeah. I just see the face! Me too. That was a glowing face! Whoa. Oh my god, I cannot believe that! Dude, his face just appeared right there! Right there! Oh my god, that was one of the craziest things I've ever seen! It's one thing to see a light, a mist, a, even a shadow, but a mm. face? Yeah. A face! Exactly. It looked like a man, too. It looked like a Native American man. Ian hears another low voice speaking from somewhere nearby. A pale face then quickly appears and disappears from right out of the darkness. Ian is shocked by what he has captured and deems his paranormal investigation a huge success. So did Ian capture the voices and face of lingering Native American spirits buried at the Crow Wing River? Let me know what you think. You Any can watch call. this entire investigation and many more spooky adventures over on the YouTube channel, Midwest Ghost Hunter. He only found one um, ghost effect or ghost face. He only found one. He didn't find loads. Um, the talking could easily be debunked as... The fact that he's probably not the only one in the woods. There's probably others in the woods as well, but further back. So when he talks and he's quiet, you can actually hear the background noise. Therefore, he's capturing background audio from other people walking. Because I do know that when you listen to it carefully, you can actually hear like people walking on like twigs. And that's what you hear breaking in the background. So he could have been catching people in the far back walking and talking. And that's what he's picking up. But the face thing, yeah, that's that's creepy AF. The San Haven Sanatorium. 
Nuke's top five viewer Ricky and his sister Vicky set out to explore the old abandoned San Haven Sanatorium near Dunseith, North Dakota. Okay. The sanatorium was built in 1912 as a treatment center for patients suffering from tuberculosis. Many of these patients did not survive. Ouch. They passed away inside the walls of the San Haven Sanatorium. Whoa. In the 1960s, the hospital became a treatment center for the mentally impaired. However, it was eventually closed in 1987 after many reports of patient mistreatment and neglect. 1987? Oh, six years after I was born. Is that right? 82. Wait. Neglect. The San Haven impaired. However, it was eventually closed in 1987 after many reports. In 19 it was closed in 1987, so. 82, 83, 84, 85, 86. Yeah, six years after I was born. Cool. So I had to double check. It's a patient mistreatment and neglect. The mm. San Haven Sanatorium is now known as a paranormal hotspot. And to this day, those with an interest in the supernatural travel mm -hmm. to the hospital to explore, hoping to experience paranormal activity. So, Ricky and his sister are carefully exploring the creepy old decaying building. They experienced something downright creepy. You know, I bet it was a morgue. Oh, come on, let me have that. Couldn't tell you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, that's creepy. Yeah, this building's getting pretty, pretty bad. No way. That wasn't you, was it? No. You're asking your sister, I'm assuming it's your sister, that if she was the one that reached up to that pole that is taller than her, if she had done that. She is literally next to you, bud. How could she have gone up without you knowing, going onto the pipes, Right, 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 right out. No, it couldn't have been her. That wasn't you, was it? No. Sounds like someone's upstairs. There's someone upstairs. <laughs> There's someone upstairs. I hope so. It just sounds to me like water pipes. Hello? <clears throat> Sorry. Hello? I mean, it is an abandoned place and an abandoned area, so it could just be water pipes that you're hearing rattling, which would cause that pipe to rattle. So, it could just be that. Where are you at? Now, it should be noted that this odd event can be explained away as simply water rattling around in the building's old rusty pipes. In fact, if you look closely, this isn't even a water pipe at all. It's actually a piece of old metal electrical conduit that has been cut in half. Nevertheless, it moves and rattles as if shaken by some unknown force. Ricky and Which couldn't have been her, which I'm assuming is the sister, that he accused her of saying it wasn't you, was it? So it could have been her because she's on the ground. And the fact that by the looks of it, it looks like to be like 10 feet tall. So there's no way she could have possibly gone up there without his knowledge, rattling the cage and then coming back up uh, the cage, rattling the uh, drain pipe and then coming back down. And then for him to turn around and see it just rattling and then say, oh, did you, that wasn't you, was it? I mean, how stupid must you be? Seriously, think before you talk, mate sister are a bit freaked out and worried that they might not be alone in the sanatorium. However, even if there was someone else upstairs, it would be impossible for that person to even reach this yeah, metal exactly. conduit to make it move. So this creepy capture remains a mystery. It is freaky. Is that you? Oh, the thing down the hall 
A group of friends from Madrid, Spain are hanging out when they suddenly hear strange sounds coming from the bathroom down the hall. Están escuchando, soy yo. Se están escuchando un montón de ruidos, tú. Soy yo del baño. No, 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 no
he soon realizes that he might have made a huge mistake. Okay. You see, this is what I don't get. I mean, churches are really amazing during the day. But the minute you go there during the night, it's a whole different atmosphere. A whole different atmosphere. It's creepy AF at night. I could have swore I heard something. I even heard that. Ooh. I think that's an animal. Yeah, it could be. Or well, could just be a squatter. But the way the place looks could be anything. Oh, wait, what? Oh, upstairs camera, okay. That's weird. Holy shit. What's upstairs? Oh, sh As Chris is exploring the basement, he hears strange noises, but can't identify the source. Then a door above him on the ground floor just slams shut. Chris quickly makes his way upstairs to investigate. And what happens next is downright creepy. Um, how do you... Okay, this is what I don't get. How do you know that it was that door specifically that closed? I mean, according to the camera down here, you've got like one, two, three, four, five. Possibly something, something else on the other side. How did you know it was that specific door? How would you know it's that specific door? Because there's other doors there. It could have been any one of these doors, but you're choosing this specific door that just happened to be the one that closed. Just saying. Okay, small closed in room, too closed in for my liking. That's creepy AF. Yeah. nothing and no one to explain why the door slammed shut. But when reviewing his footage at home, he realizes that he captured more than he thought. Yeah, he may have seen it when he got home. But the question is, before he even got home, he knew it was that door. The question is, though, how did he know it was that specific door? It could have been any number of these doors, but he went to the exact one that closed. Um, I'm finding it a bit sus, to be honest. A 4K static camera that he placed inside the church's chapel reveals that something seems to move towards the door just before it slams shut. Another static camera shows something pale and translucent moving around the pews. Hold up a minute. So if someone moved in that van and moved across there before that door closed. Oh, that's right. Ghosts can walk through walls, can't they? Duh. <laughs> While Chris is in the room. But that's not all that Chris captured that night, because after a thorough walkthrough of the church, Chris decides to check out one of the abandoned houses on Holton Avenue. It did not go well. That's a sketch. Mm -hmm. This cannot be safe. It's completely different atmosphere at night. It's creepy AF. Oh, 
find a body down here. Don't say that. It actually looks like it's just underneath the house. It's not really a basement. Still creepy. Someone else is in there with you. Oh shit, someone was actually in there. While checking out the house's basement, Chris hears movement on the floor above him. Freaked out by the sound, he quickly starts making his way out of there. But there's someone inside with him, peeking out from behind a curtain. The man seems to be living in the abandoned home. That's Chris creepy, knows yeah. the horrifying stories of the people who met a tragic end on Holton Avenue, so he quickly just gets out of the house. And with that, Chris has had about enough. He decides to just head home. I would have done the same. Now, for obvious reasons, I advise everyone watching this to just stay away from Holton Avenue. Mm -hmm. But if you want to see more of Chris's explorations, you can find them all on his YouTube channel, Urbex Hill. Freefall. TikTok user Jalen Rich is hanging out with a friend on the boardwalk in Santa Cruz, California a little after closing time. Something okay. happens that freaks them both out. Okay, but the boardwalk closed like half an hour ago. This is scary. Where the f Okay, I'm really bad at this. Whoa. No one's on there, is there? Okay, I totally saw someone. Someone's actually on that ride. Someone appears to be seated on the Santa Cruz Boardwalk Freefall Ride, even though the ride is supposed to be closed. But then, whoever or whatever it is seems to disappear into thin air. Jalen explains oh, that's that creepy. she and her friend saw someone sitting on the ride and have no idea how to explain what happened. Now, the Santa Cruz Boardwalk opened in 1907 and has seen at least three confirmed fatal accidents over the last 116 years. Three? Did it say three fatal accidents? But then, air. Jalen explains that both she and her friend saw someone sitting on the ride and have no idea how to explain what happened. Now, the Santa Cruz Boardwalk opened in 1907 and has seen at least three confirmed fatal accidents over the last 116 years. So over the last 116 years, it has confirmed three fatal accidents. Wow. That's not bad considering many, like, um, you know, parks and all that lot, they have multiple accidents. This one specifically has only had three in the last 116 years. So that's not bad. I mean, it's still bad that they've had accidents, but it's not bad for the amount of accidents they've had. One rumor even states that a park visitor tragically broke their neck on this very ride. So could it be that Jalen captured the spirit of someone who never made it out of the park? You decide. Whoa. Followed home. TikTok user Francisco Javier claims that strange things have been happening at his home in Spain after exploring an abandoned farm he came across one day in the middle of nowhere. He says that the farm is a place of intense paranormal activity. Okay. Vale. No sé, Está por aquí. Hola. Escúchenlo. Francisco is recording at the farm when a door slams shut right behind him. After his days exploring the farm, he believes that something might have followed him home. Empiezo a grabar porque estoy collando sonidos desde el baño muy raro y estoy solo en casa. Dentro del baño. 
you do hear bangings, that I do know. Open the door, find out. Go on. You're doing good? Go on, pull down that thing. Oh, it's moving. Shit. Francisco believes that he might be dealing with multiple entities as he begins to hear taunting voices, laughing, and even the sound of intense crying in the night. You hear a baby crying. Whoa. That's creepy AF. The chilling sound of a baby crying sends Francisco off to search his entire apartment, but he finds nothing to explain the sound. Another night and things escalate to another level when Francisco's Amazon Alexa begins to behave very strangely and absolutely terrifying. Alexa me da un susto de muerte. Whoa, now that's either someone playing a prank and the eyes of those cats actually do glow, or that's appeared in the glass itself. Now that's creepy as. Que susto. Francisco says that his elect. Oh, hello! Nice to see a face. I probably showed it at the beginning, but I didn't see it. But hello. So it's disconnected, yet it calls out in Spanish. Go to the window. I want to see you. But look at that, though. That is creepy AF. And I'm not being funny, but um, with an Alexa, I don't have one now. With an Alexa, you can actually trigger it via your phone. And um, you can type in to your phone what you want Alexa to say. So technically speaking, if it's the same one that I think he's got, then this could be faked. I'm not saying that it is. It could be legit. But I'm saying it could be faked. Because we found out that a certain YouTuber, which I will not mention here, um, actually does fake his uh, Alexa speakings. So um, I'll let... Beardy gets scared that you know, let you in on that one. But yeah, so Alexas can be triggered via your phone. So just putting it out there. But it is still creepy though, nevertheless. It's those eyes that creep me the f out. It's those eyes. <laughs> And that's not the only time that this happens. Oh yeah, he's got the Alexa. Yeah, that's the one that you can... Yeah. Okay. Are you shitting me? I've got goosebumps. Oops, I've got goosebumps all over my freaking arms. Are you really shitting me? Oh, I was not expecting that. Holy crap. I was definitely, most definitely, not expecting that. Holy shit. A female voice coming from the Alexa laughs out loud but then stops as soon as Francisco comes around the corner. Then an entirely different, lower and creepier voice calls out, Hola. <laughs> Hola. 
Francisco has had enough, but he has no idea how to stop the terrifying activity. He tries to continue living his life as... Sorry. <laughs> Francisco has had enough. You see, most men that are up there, they look freaking amazing. I have to say, they look bloody amazing. He is actually really handsome. So, oh my God. Yeah, I just have to say that. But he has no idea how to stop the terrifying activity. He tries to continue living his life as if nothing has happened. But then one night when he's hanging out just watching TV, this happens. Whoa! It's there. Right there, holy crap. Hmm. Okay. Francisco is startled by knocking coming from his hallway door. When he stands up to check it out, he spots what appears to be a small child looking yeah. in through the window. That's what I saw. Shocked by what he's seeing, he quickly opens the door only to find no one there. Whoever or whatever this is has disappeared. So did something follow Francisco home from the abandoned farm that he explored? Could it even... And the fact that it's blurry and not very good quality to see, it's... Yeah. And be multiple spirits. Maybe. And if you were in his shoes, just what would you do? Me? I would run to my bed and hide under the covers. Because I would be too shitting myself to even want to leave the room. Or even a house for that matter. Well, um, that was creepy to say the least. Um, I have to admit, that guy who I literally just saw was handsome and cute as AF. I'm going to say that. I don't care. Um, I am gay. I'm, I'm entitled to say that. But anyways, um... But yeah, like I said, you can actually trigger off an Alexa via your phone. Um, I got rid of my Alexa because um, it kept on ordering things for me that I didn't want. And yes, you can actually get them to pre-order things for you as well. Um, I got rid of mine because at night it kept on whispering and I thought somebody was in the house to the point that my Alexa was actually getting out of control. So that's why I had to literally wrap it up and then chuck it. I could have sent it back to Amazon, which is where I got it from, but I thought, no, I'm not going to send a default one back to Amazon. I'm just going to chuck it. So since then, I haven't got a new one. I'm considering it, but I don't know, because just in case I get the same experience as what I had previously with the old one. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Um, I'm extremely happy with the amount of subs that I've got and I can't believe my views on my videos have gone up and um but yeah if you want just subscribe to my channel and uh, also hit that bell notification to get notified each time I record a video um, which will be every day this week uh, Monday through to Friday but weekends I have time off and also don't forget to also hit that like button as well so that way uh it helps my channel extremely a lot so um yeah i'm glad that you i'm glad that i was able to do this so um yeah if you want any more content please let me know in the comments below and until next time guys i'll speak to you tomorrow night and until then bye for now peace